Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, we are making some progress on Adolfo's engine here. I got his crank on some V-blocks and we are going to fix up that keyway. Uh, the crank grinder no longer fixes keyways for me, so uh, we're going to do it today. I have taken all the area that was really messed up. This was like three times the size it should be. And um, I, I TIG welded that in carefully and we're just about ready to go in there to um, make the, uh, the Woodruff key slot. But uh, before we do that I'd like to thank uh, Bill Longyard. Um, I think you guys may remember him. He was nice enough to send me this tripod which I use in almost all my videos. And just recently uh, I've been trying to work on getting better lighting on my videos because I know they're not always the brightest but he took the time to send me this light and I have it on this junky tripod that I found at a tag sale or something and uh, uh, and he sent me another light as well and I'm trying to figure out and get better lighting on my videos so we're gonna try this one out today and see how it works out I hope it uh, I hope it starts to get better but um, I'm always trying to improve them and Bill if you're watching I really appreciate uh, the help you're giving me so let me know if there's ever anything you need and uh, I'm gonna get set up for this uh, there's two key ways here there's one for the the pulley uh, for the fan belt and then your crank gear goes in that particular slot um, this one rarely gets messed up, but this one oftentimes does. And uh, we've got a number 9 key here and a 13 right there. So I have my number 9 Woodruff key cutter in there. We'll get set up. Uh, you see I've got some V-blocks. I've got some uh, serrated riser blocks. I've got some hold downs. And I've got some uh, rubber inner tube right there protecting the crank and it's rigid and we'll just go in there slowly and on each of my Woodruff key boxes I have the depth that we need to go in to make the proper cut so we're gonna go in uh, uh, 214 thousandths and make that cut next so let me get set up for that and I'll be right back with you Hey guys there's the finished keyway you can see how much weld I had to put on there uh, we'll get the crank off here we'll head over to the bench and we will carefully file that extra weld off there uh, but we've got a nice key cut in there now in the proper location to the proper depth so that's what we're after and I'll meet you over at the bench okay I just cleaned this up a little bit there was just a little bit of excess weld sticking up there because that was so wide uh, I've got probably uh, I don't know maybe eight beads in there to get that where I wanted it now that's nice and strong on this side this is always the side that wears uh, and this was just the key was almost rolled all the way over so I just hand filed that with that file on the bench there 
and uh, when I got to take just a little bit off I like a file uh, now we're going to try and fit the key in there I have I have the pulley fitting on there real good so we're going to fit the key and make sure that we can get that slid all the way on there okay guys we have the number nine key tapped in there that's solid it's not moving or anything we got the perfect size cut with the with the right cutter uh, and we went in 214 thousandths and the depth you go in if you go in too deep, that'll go in too shallow, it won't act as a good key. If you don't go enough, you'll never get your pulley over it. So, you could go to the machinery handbook. Uh, there's a lot of information on Woodruff keys. And they give you the width, the length, uh, the depth that you take your key cutter in. Uh, and it's critical. Uh, you miss it just by a few thousandths and it messes you up. So, that's why on each of my... Uh, key cutters there, the Woodruff key cutter cases, I have the depth that I go in. This was 214 thousandths and let's see how this goes on. And we have absolutely no slop in that pulley back out a little bit here so you can see um, you know when we turn that there's there's zero slop on that you know we can turn the whole crank around no slop uh, like I say it takes a lot to set up to do this um, and that's why I was always I was letting the crank guys do it um, they were they were all set up for it but um, it's something you could do in your own shop if you need to uh, if you have a mill and uh, you get the the right uh, Woodruff key cutter uh, you could fix these don't use don't put your key in pack that with JB weld I see that on uh, some engines come in like that you might think it works but by the time I take the crank out and guys have done that it's all cracked out of there and it's just um, this whole thing is just kind of moving around and making a mess of things um, if it's worn the only way to really fix it properly is with uh, careful TIG welding of beads in there. Make sure you don't get any porosity. Make sure you don't get any um, bad welds in there. Uh, take your time. Keep it cool. And uh, lay some beads in there. And just go in there with your Woodruff key cutter and, uh, and fix that. Uh, I have had a lot of questions in the past about guys saying, can I use JB Weld? I mean, basically, you could use anything on your own project. Uh, uh, it doesn't really matter, but... Um, that's not the proper way to fix it and uh, I hope I showed you guys how to set up for that and how to how to fix that correctly um, this will this will last the life of the engine again uh, it's a good solid fix and uh, he won't have any trouble with that anymore so uh, that's the proper way to fix a crank woodruff key so just a real shorty today uh, just wanted to show you guys how to do that like I say, uh, very recently I had a guy saying, can I put JB Weld in there? Um, I don't recommend it, but you know, it's your own project, you can do it. So I hope this helps at least one person out there who has a messed up keyway. And uh, as always, thanks everybody for watching, and I will catch you on the next video.